What's up? This is Brandon Ellis from the Black Dahlia Murder, and I'm excited to walk you guys through my collection of pretty awesome guitars. This is my latest custom shop from Jackson. It is a 27 fret Kelly. Like I've been playing, this is the, uh, the, the one previous. So this is the newest one, the second newest one, and the third newest custom shop here. So you can kind of see how the guitars have evolved as I sort of get to um, tailor it more to myself. But um, this guitar is really special. We've got this gold metal flake crackle paint job here, gold hardware, gold frets. I had them do some special things on this guitar like uh, a hemispherical fret dressing so the ends are nicely kind of spherical and ball shaped like that, just an extra artisanal touch there. There are some scallops in the high E side of the fretboard from the 17th fret up. These inlays are made out of a recon stone that kind of matches the finish with that gold and black sort of thing going on. And of course we have this beautiful flame maple fingerboard here. This was the first custom shop I ordered. This is the one that my signature model is actually based off of this guitar exactly right here. You can see that the USA version has a much tighter knit crackle finish, which is really cool up close in person. And just as a guitar in my collection, it's beautiful and I love this thing. But um, the bigger cracks also look really cool on stage because people can actually kind of see that better. These inlays glow in the dark actually, which is really cool. And um, so do the, the side dots on these guitars because I kind of need that on stage to be able to see when the, the lighting designer turns the lights off on us. So these are my production model signature guitars. This one is pretty close to stock other than the tremolo which I uh, upgraded to a, a Turkish company called Hantug. But this is one that I kind of tricked out myself. I refretted it with uh, the same gold fret wire that the gold guitar has. So I do a lot of, a lot of work myself on these guitars, of course. So uh, that was quite an ordeal to pull all the frets out and, and redo it. But um, it's just a, it's a cool look. So I just have like some gold hardware on this thing, make it a little bit special. I put the Lumen Lay side dots on this one myself as well. And um, just because I love these guitars, I think they're an awesome upgrade platform as well. And I can kind of soup it up to have all of the accompaniments that I asked for on my custom shop guitars. And it's, to me, it's absolutely just as good. And it's really like my, probably my most played workhorse guitar, I'd say. It's probably this one here, my, my tricked out production model. This is the, uh, the first guitar that started my endorsement with Jackson. I, um, I placed the order for this one and they were like, you're gonna have to wait you know, a year maybe for a custom shop, but we have this just hanging around and are you into it? And I was like, man, that's so my style, like immediately, like it was just a really kind of lucky thing. And um, this one's painted by Dan Lawrence, who's like arguably one of the, the best guitar painters there is. Um, this guitar also has a, a sustainer in it. So if I flip this on, it'll ring out a harmonic. I don't know if you can actually hear that or not, but it is happening. Um, it's very cool. It'll ring out any note that you play forever. It's powered by a battery, and that's a, a cool feature I'm starting to, starting to use. This is a 90s Kelly. This, this completes my collection of Kellys. I refretted this one as well with the gold frets, and this one has a really cool logo on it. It has the, the color changing logo to match the finish, and I, I love that little detail. It's very cool. Of course, the back of the neck and everything paint job is awesome on this one. So love that guitar. This one is pretty recent for me. It's a, uh, a crackle soloist, uh, student soloist they call it. That's a, what Jackson called a soloist with a rosewood fingerboard and dot inlays and, and no binding. This finish is really cool because nowadays when they do the crackle finishes, so what, for those who don't know how it works, they paint the whole guitar just one color and that's a base coat. And then a top coat, they spray a black crackle paint on top of it. It's just black paint that shrinks up and reveals the coat underneath. But when they do it nowadays, they do a sealer between the color and the crackle. But in the old days, they didn't. So you can actually see the color itself sort of tear apart in between the cracks on like these old ones. And that's a really cool effect. But if you, if you get it wrong, if you don't like the pattern or something, there's no going back because you've kind of ruined it. But if you seal it, you do the crackle, it doesn't turn out great. You can wipe it off and try again, no problem. So it's a little bit riskier to do it this way, but that's kind of a cool old school thing. This one is super funny. This is my Bikini Beach Soloist. This was like a, 
uh, a model that was somewhat of a production model, I guess. I mean, they don't, everything's custom with, with old school Jackson, but this was like in the catalog. A lot of people have these guitars. There are a bunch of them out there. And uh, it's just one of those, those novelty pieces that I always, always knew I had to have someday and eventually got my hands on Bikini Beach Soloist. And the same thing goes for this, uh, this Patrick Nagel-esque guitar here. Um, they made these for a little while, but they uh, were, they got into a little bit of legal trouble about it, so they don't do this anymore, but it's, uh, it's very similar to like a Patrick Nagel style, like Rio Duran Duran type thing. And uh, it's for that reason, it's again, a really cool novelty to me and a really rare thing because you, you can't get this anymore. Moving down here, we have a, a Fender Strat that I actually scalloped the fretboard on myself. And it's, it's sort of funny if you see, I actually went into some of the side dots because they went a little bit too deep and you can see them coming through the front. Um, I'm all about DIY and just doing all my own work. And if it turns out kind of janky, that's, that's cool because I did it myself and I'm, I'm happy for it. So this is a, you know, my, my version of like an Yngwie Strat that I just kind of made myself. Here we have two HM Strats in, uh, I think they call this one Ice Blue, even though it's really more of like a turquoise. I think that these guitars have really aged into the colors they have, where I don't think that they looked like this new at all. Um, from what I've seen, this one was just blue when it was new and it's turned into kind of like a, a turquoise type thing. And this one was just bright pink and it's turned into this peachy orange kind of color, I guess, because the clear coat just sort of yellows. But these guitars are very cool old Fender guitar that a lot of people don't know about. Here, this is a USA Charvel. This is probably the longest running guitar in this collection. I think this is the, I've owned a lot of guitars before these ones that I have now that I, when I used to buy them and sell them and trade them around and all kinds of stuff, but this is the, the one that I've had in my collection for the longest that kind of predates all these other ones. Um, I've got an old Charvel here with a Desert Crackle. This is a, a USA Jackson from uh, 1987. Has a really cool kind of sparkle blue, sort of uh, almost like a car paint color, like a cool like muscle car souped up sort of thing to me. I, I think it was called like Pontiac blue when I, when I saw it in the store, so I always have that in my mind. This one has a cool paint job. It's called Coral Sea. Another old school Jackson color that you could get back in the 80s and the 90s. And uh, again, just a guitar that I, I always knew that someday I would I would want to find one of these, track one down, and put it in my collection. This one is a dinky. Um, though a lot of people tell me they're like, oh, it's a fusion because it has this scoop. But I've measured it, and it's 25.5 inch scale length. I'm sure it's a dinky, so it must have been some kind of uh, either like a, must have been a custom order because I don't even think a, a neck swap would work in that situation. But whatever, nerd stuff. We have the, uh, the American Soloist SL3. This is the one that I played in the, uh, the advertising campaign. It's definitely like sentimental to me because of that. It's really, that was a really cool experience. And uh, these are really nice, very, very sick guitars. Another old custom shop. This one has a, uh, it has the old school style fret binding where it actually covers the ends of the frets, which is like a retro thing that nobody really does anymore. And it has like these tiny vintage sort of frets. It's something, um, Jackson did on the old Rhodes guitars, but it's unusual to see this on uh, anything else really in, in terms of their lineup. It's a Strat 24, which is kind of a rare model as well. It's not a Dinky, it's not a San Dimas, it's just somewhere in between. It's a Strat with 24 frets. And for this, this is also like just a, I've, this is the only one of these guitars that exists as far as I know. There are other Strat 24s, but this one's just a, a custom order. And this one finally, is a, a 96 SL2 that my wife and I did this hollow flash finish on, which is really a cool old school 80s paint job type thing. It's like a foil that you just iron into it. And I also had the fretboard done up with these LED inlays because it was just a blank fretboard when I got this guitar. So of course, you know, I gotta, gotta do everything I can to make my guitars as flashy as possible. So. Got the LEDs in there, and I have my, my Porsche 944 sticker on here. Um, this is an actual sticker from like the bumper. I ordered a couple of them, and I had that extra one lying around for my old 80s Porsche, so I stuck it on this guitar. And that concludes the, the wall of Jackson Charvel. 
And now we have uh, the other side of the room that we can check out that has guitars of the other brands. Of course, I, I endorse these guitars and I'm happy to show them off. But before I got into that deal, I was already an avid guitar collector and I've got lots of cool stuff by other companies. These are my Yamahas here, these four on the back here. This is a Blue Saraceno signature model. He's one of my absolute favorite guitar players in the world, a huge influence on me. And uh, his watermelon plaid guitar with reverse headstock and green logo. It's, um, I don't know, I think you can just see the influence. And the parallel axis pickups has definitely, definitely been an inspiration to me. These are other Yamaha guitars, old ones, and they used to, they used to, I feel like, put more into the electric department and before acoustics became the the main focus. We have a, uh, a Zion in a very cool kind of foily crackle paint job. And uh, this is a, a guitar builder that is a little bit uncommon. So I always wanted to have one of these. And really, really cool, very tight knit crackle pattern on this one. We have this Hamer Scarab, which is a cool extreme shape guitar. Um, I love the finish on this. They call it Zulu. And I order these Seymour Duncans to match the paint job here for this specifically. I played this one in, uh, in Cannabis Corpse. I got some use on a couple tours out of this guitar, and it was awesome. We have a Barrington. It's um, ESP made this brand back in the 80s. They were only around for a couple years. Here are my USA PVs. PV is a, another company that used to hand make USA guitars. These are a few of them. These are my Destinies, and this is the Odyssey. So up here now. These three are my lag guitars. It's a French luthier that I used to endorse for a little while before Jackson. This is like a 2005 custom shop and this guitar, such a cool shape to it, such a cool paint job. It's got this cool kind of mauve color to it that's really just kind of indescribable. And I like the inlays, they kind of flip back and forth and they're made of a different material every other one. So it's pretty sweet. This is a, a custom shop guitar. This one, is called an Arcane. It is also handmade in France. This actually tracked all the rhythm guitars on Nightbringers. This one is a, uh, a rock line in a, a cool snake print pattern and also has the parallel axis pickups in here, which were popular at that time in the early 90s and um, which are kind of my staple now. This is a Gibson M3. This is like a 24 fret like shredder Gibson guitar, which is pretty rare and a lot of people don't really know about these. They did reissue this sort of recently, like within the past 10 years, but this is a, an old original one and it's, it's cool. It's kind of classy and like sort of, sort of gives me pimp vibes. I'm into it, the red and the tortoise shell, very cool. We have a, a Gibson Explorer E90. This is like a Scorpion signature model kind of for Matthias Yobbs. It's got 24 frets and again, it's just sort of, sort of strange to see Gibson making these like Floyd Rose guitars, maybe Maybe they do a little bit more now, but back in the day, it was kind of like a, a cool novelty. Then here are a couple of Aria guitars. That's like a, a Japanese company. This is an Explorer and, uh, or an you know, Explorer knockoff. It's called a, a ZZ Custom. And this one I actually bought in Japan on my first Japan tour with BDM. I went to like a dozen guitar stores at least, and I uh, was looking for like the deal of a, a cool Japanese made guitar that was kind of underappreciated. And I took this one home and it's, Got a really cool black cherry paint job it's neck through and it's just a really high quality um, Japanese know what they're doing with Luthery. Then we have some Japanese as well, some Les Paul knockoffs. So this is a, a Greco Les Paul Custom. Um, again, like a, a you know knockoff Les Paul, but it's from 1977 and it's like an exact copy of the Les Paul Custom from that year. It's got this really nice stripy ebony fretboard which you really don't see hardly ever and it's just a really, really high quality guitar. It has a maple neck, just like they did in the 70s on Gibson Les Pauls. This is the same idea, but this one's made by Bernie. And then over here, we have my Guild Skyhawk, and this is one of my favorite guitars in the collection just because of how striking it is. It's really got a crazy paint job and uh, Kaler hardware, a bunch of just kind of stuff you don't see anymore. I don't know, it's a really cool guitar. So there's a few more guitars that don't fit on my 40 racks here. So this, this is my pair of Vester Crackle guitars. They're a concert series. This is the first Crackle guitar I ever got. It all started here, and then I got this gold one to match it. I did my, uh, my BDM audition on this guitar and, and played it for, uh, for some BDM touring. Then over here, we have a pair of ESPs from the 80s with the uh, lawsuit headstocks that look a lot like these ones. 
and um, that's a, you know just a novelty that I liked about it. You know those uh, the ones that are that that are kind of forbidden. Um, this was the first guitar I got that had like a, a really out just obnoxious glam metal paint job. That was the, kind of the start of that. The guy I bought this from really liked George Lynch, and he had this this purple snake print done on here aftermarket and I you know I thought it was so ugly that I, I had to have it and then uh, of course the the crackle mirage and then this is my travel guitar that I take to my hotel rooms on tour to uh, make my patreon videos and things something I can you know get that doesn't have to I don't have to unload the trailer to find it and I can just throw in a, a little bag and take with me so gotta gotta have that green crackle for of I'm a man of novelty so there you have it guys pretty much all the guitars in my collection right here. For more, you guys can follow me on Instagram or Facebook or subscribe to my Shred Light District Patreon where I'm giving lessons and posting bonus content all the time.